See, this wasn't press screen. This is the new film by Mark Tondroy. Now, you, you'll remember Mark Tondroy because we worked with him at Radio 1. Yes, he was the kind of the newly arrived uh, wannabe DJ. He was had, like one show a week. Well, not wannabe, he was a DJ. Yeah, what I mean is he was the new kid on the block. Yeah, he say, was at the time, I believe, the youngest Radio 1 DJ signing ever. And then he went off and did, because he was like five. And then he went off and did some other stuff. And then I bumped into him at the Cornwall Film Festival years ago. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm a filmmaker. And I said, really? And he'd made this film called Hush, a low-budget little uh, suspense thriller horror movie, which is really terrific. Then don't hear anything from a while. Then How's the End of the Street comes out. They don't press screen it. So there's loads of trailers for it, but they don't press screen it. It's gone in at number three. Story is um, Jennifer Lawrence and her mum, played by... Um, uh, this will come to me in a moment. Uh, go Move into a new house. And the new house they've moved into is... Elizabeth with shoe. Is it at and, the end of the street? Yeah, is at the end of the street, and guess what? It's, it's next got nothing to, next to it. So, you, you, you know, you get the thing, they move in, there's a creepy house next door, it's taking down the value of their property, guess what? The house isn't empty, there's a guy who lives there, he meets up with him, everybody lives there, oh, it's all full of Does bad stories. Act? Well, no, because he actually turns out to be a nice guy. Or does he? But then the, actually the house is perfectly fine. Or is it? Now, here's the thing with this. If this Years and years ago, this was announced as a Jonathan Mostow film with Richard Kelly working on the script. And then it kind of went into turnaround and then it sat around for a long time. And it's finally emerged now, directed by Mark Tondroy. It's not terrible. The general rule is, I've done a blog about this incidentally, about the idea that p- people don't show you films. It's because they're terrible. It's not terrible. It's not very good. I mean, I have to say other people who've seen it, like Nigel Floyd, who was a big fan of Hush as well, really didn't like it at all. I read a couple of online reviews of people who and that may be I think some people's back was put up by having not been press screened it's not terrible it's just really strangely unremarkable and the most unremarkable thing about it is that I do think that Mark Tondry has a visual style if you look at Hush low budget little movie you know he's actually got edge and he's got creative you know he's got something in the case of this it just looks like the film was blanded out to the point which it is a, an extraordinarily unremarkable you know they go they move in there's a creepy house at the end of the thing do you think it's creepy no it's fine or maybe it is creepy and then there's that guy do you think he's okay well maybe and then it's got there's a twist and then there's another twist and by the time you get to the second twist you're going yeah no really no at no point is it scary it is quite nicely atmospheric in places but it is very very unmemorable it's just shame because i think mark tonderai is a better director than this film allows him to be i'm in a film with mark tonderai did you well a brief radio one video does that count yeah it, it's me and him we're recreating the uh bob dylan video we have a subterranean home sick blues, home sick blues yeah. uh, and and I'm doing the cards, and he's standing in the background. Being oh a, right, fine. Being Alan Ginsberg. Ah, I very think, good. I think that's what it is, yeah. anyway. Well, I I do think that he's a talented director on the basis of Hush. I do not think this movie adequately demonstrates what he can do. Okay. On the other hand, it's a much bigger hit than Hush was, but I think largely on the strength of Jennifer Lawrence. A couple of comments from our Facebook page, now more popular than Test Match Special. <laughs> not that we're uh, obsessed with trivia and small-minded things. Robbie Owen, me and a friend had the cinema to ourselves for a screening of uh, House at the End of the Street and as such found ourselves breaking the code of conduct, desperately trying to guess what the awesome twist the poster boasts of was. It's not awesome. Well, we did get it in under an hour. I couldn't help but feel that the film would have been better if her mum was Bruce Willis, which I don't understand. Ross Miller on her Facebook page, the title of House at the End of the Street should give you some indication right away just how generic the film itself it, will exactly, be. Exactly, that's the word. It's generic. A cliched setup with a half-hearted mother-daughter story chucked in before twisting with the knife and painfully tame scares and twists, in inverted commas, uh, and turns that feel thrown in for the sake of it. It fights out with this year's Silent House remake for best tank top wearing female lead. So there is, I suppose, always that. But don't waste your money. Generic is absolutely right. and But the interesting thing about how bland it is and how... N- unsurprising the twist is the fact that eight years ago Richard Kelly you know Jonathan Moss people were saying we've got this great script it's going to honestly it's brilliant and the twists are so and the fact that it's then turned out to be so generic who was it that used the word generic uh, it was the person who sent in the comment that should on be our on, that should page. be on the poster generic 